Today, we're talking about tempo, uh, timers, and kind of how, how you have to have your wave before you go make a play. That includes roaming, that includes taking an objective, that includes hovering a play, that includes getting a ward down, that includes going back. Um, the reason we're doing this lecture on this topic is because this is a mistake that last week we saw in 80% of our VODs, right? We were either overstaying, we didn't have the time to make the play that we were trying to go make, or we were just leaving when we couldn't because we didn't have the wave in the right spot, right? So this is our first lecture like this, but we are going to be doing lectures kind of based on topics that show up. Like this week we had like three games back to back to back about Katarina. So we might even just talk about specifically what Katarina does and, and kind of how to play around her next week. But for this week, we're talking about timers and wave management. Um, things that are important to know going into this that we're going to talk about a lot is how basic wave management works, right? I hope we all know by now, but just as a little reminder, like when we crash a wave, that's when the wave gets under the tower. The next wave after that will bounce back and that will start to push, right? So let's say you crash wave A and it's like two big waves that crash. Wave B is going to slowly start to push back and wave C is going to be kind of frozen on your side, assuming neither of you touch it. And then tempo is going to be a term we talk about. Now, tempo is a term that it's a blanket term to talk about kind of timing. When we're talking about tempo in relation to waves, we're often talking about matching it with your teammates, right? So if you want to take this dragon, one of the best things you can do to have good tempo is to crash your bottom wave and your mid wave at the same time and bonus points if it's at the same time as your jungle is finishing is clear, right? That would be really, really good tempo. So these are important to know before we get into this. Now let's go ahead and get started. I actually want to know, what do you guys know about timers before we start? And let's just write some things down here. If you wanted to make a play bottom, what has to happen? It would have to be when a cannon wave's either coming up or just cleared, I guess. Okay, so... Um, you also need cryo. The, the, cannon, the cannon wave is involved somehow. Okay, cannon waves are important. Um, need prio. What does that mean? What does priority mean? You have control over the map. Or your side of the map, at least. But, like, how does that happen? Like, I know what the word priority means, but, like, how? Like, what? How does that actually manifest in a game of League? Shove on the wave. If lane, your wave is pushing. Yeah. If you have, um, pushing wave. This is exactly. When can we not roam? When you are pushed in. Yep, so if they have prio, or, and, and why is that? Because we don't know where their jungler is. <laughs> well, because you lose yeah, the wave. But you lose the wave, right? That's the reason. If no prio, no prio, we lose the wave. That's the biggest key, right? We're, all of this wave management stuff is to make sure we're not losing the income that's kind of handed to us we really need to focus on the goal is losing as little minions as possible so we have to kind of have priority we have to push the wave is there another way that we could do this without pushing jungle is taking your wave for you and you can roam or top lane is roaming mid yeah but i'm not gonna even count those because you don't really want your jungle like you don't want to swap places with the jungle it's just kind of a thing that happens as a byproduct there is a uh, play where top lane pushes his wave then comes mid and you rotate bot, no? How do you yeah, I don't think you do that in solo queue though. Like, Shifting. Um, that's a very kind of coordinated play. There's a much simpler idea that can be done and replicated in every single one of your games. Oh, so, your mid laner is dead or uh, cold. Right, but does that mean you just leave automatically? Like if they're dead and... No, but uh, if the wave uh, is uh, frozen in the middle, you can run. Beautiful. Without pushing. That, yeah, that's another key. If you have a freeze, you have some sort of timer, right? Because if you guys both leave, so whether, you know, if they die or if they roam, right? Like, let's say they roam top to their strong side, which is your weak side, but you have a freeze, you can roam bottom right away. You don't need to waste the time crashing and then they can come back and kind of react to you. You can just leave right away, right? So this is kind of like the advanced... Um, because the goal is to lose as few minions as possible, 
the freeze will make sure they lose more minions than we do, you actually have some opportunity here. Okay, so... But to do that, uh, you have, uh, um, your opponent uh, has to not be in lane, right? Because you can't roam... Uh, yeah. You can't have a way frozen roam or your opponent doesn't shove it in. They either have to not be in lane, or they have to not be able to crash the wave enough, because let's say it's like wave three, and you have a very slight freeze on that cannon wave, like the third wave of the game. Um, and they're playing a mage that doesn't have any push or mana. You can go move to the scuttle fight and come back before like the cannon dies. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we'll actually talk about that later. So these are some general ideas. Notice stuff here is not very specific, right? Nobody was telling me exactly how a good roam would look. Nobody was telling me kind of specifics. We even just mentioned like cannon waves are, are important. So that's good. We have a light understanding of how timers work, but I want us to, at the end of this, really be like, okay, this would be a really good timer. This would be a really bad timer. This is what I look for. This is the information I'm looking at. Let's go ahead and get started. So the key points to timers, and to just get a little bit more specific about what we're talking about, is um, the bigger the wave you crash, the bigger the timer is, right? So there are factors, or I guess, I guess a crash equals a timer right? That's what we're going to talk about first. And there are factors that impact how big or how small this, this timer is, right? So the amount of minions impacts how big the timer is. If you crash two waves or three waves, that's going to be a bigger timer than one wave. And why is that? Because the tower takes longer to kill the wave. Yeah, exactly. The wave's just going to be locked into the tower longer, right? The minions are going to take longer to die. The opponent is going to take longer to crash it right how tanky is the wave is really important right and you guys even mentioned this cannons make the the timer way bigger because a, a cannon oh i don't remember how many tower shots they take does anybody remember seven, I think seven? It's seven yeah i think it's seven they take seven tower shots where a caster only takes two a melee only takes three right so cannons make the timer way bigger and the opponent can't push it as fast right so if it's if you are crashing a cannon, this wave is going to be locked here even longer. Or if a cannon's coming back to lane on the bounced wave, they're not going to be able to crash it. So you actually have a freeze on that bounced wave, which buys you more time, right? So if you crash, how often do cannon waves spawn? Every minute Every and a half. Every three or... up until some point. You got 20 minutes, right? Yeah, it's a. Uh... 20 minutes, uh, every wave is a cannon wave. Uh... Yeah, it's every minute thirty. Every third wave, I believe it's up to fifteen, and then it's every other, and then at twenty-five, it's every wave. They just changed that recently, like two years ago. So it's either fifteen or twenty. I don't remember which one. But yeah, so a cannon comes every third wave in laning phase. So um, if you crash, let's say wave A is a normal one, is a normal non-cannon, and you're slow pushing this, and then wave B is a normal one and you decide to crash this, so you crash two waves, and the next one is a cannon, how big is that timer? Would that be, like, on the spectrum of, like, small to biggest timers, how big do you think that is? Like, can you repeat what you, did you crash? So we, we crash wave B, right, which is the second wave in the cannon cycle. So we crash two waves, the next one's a cannon. How big is that, how big is that timer? I really don't know. That timer's gonna be huge, because... You crash two waves, right? The amount of minions is big. The wave is pretty tanky because, again, you have two waves. And the next wave is a cannon. So on the bounce wave, they're not going to be able to crash it under your tower for a long time. So this timer is going to be really, really, really big. Let's keep going. How far is the next wave is also a really big uh, factor, right? And this is something that in our VODs we miss quite a bit of. So let's say you crash one wave and you kind of just get like a normal timer from it. So you just crash one wave. but the next wave is like here, right? And it's, it's marching to lane. How big is that timer? Pretty short. Yeah, it's almost non-existent. Like there is almost no timer there, right? Because this wave is right back in the lane. You have time to like maybe go drop a ward or maybe hover like a crab fight, but you can't back here. You can't roam here, right? Unless your opponent also backs, in which case you'd have a freeze. Um, and then the next consideration is how fast does your enemy push on the bounced wave, right? When this wave comes here and lands, 
how fast is your opponent going to be able to burn the wave? If you're playing against something like Annie or LeBlanc, you actually have extra time because they push slow on the bounce. So you have a little bit extra time because you can actually run back to when your wave's at your tower. They have to crash this all the way. But if you're playing against somebody with good wave clear, like some sort of, I don't know, AD assassin, you're playing against like a Lucian or a Talon or a Tristana, they're going to burn that bounce wave super fast. You have less time there. Do these factors make sense? Yeah. Okay, huge. Yeah. Keep these all in mind. We're going to use these to kind of determine how big the, the timers are in the examples later. So I also like to use this little turn analogy, which is a nice, it's a very oversimplified way of viewing timers, but it's a very good starting point, right? Certain plays require turns. Um, and you can see like these different plays roughly cost different turns. If you're going to go ward, it costs like maybe half a turn, right? If you're going to go reset, it costs a turn and a half. If you're going to go roam, and gank a lane, it's going to cost like two turns, right? And turns are decided how, by how big the timer is, right? So we talked about in that situation where, um, let's say you crash this wave, but the wave, the next wave is really close and we have a very short timer. That would be like half a turn worth of time. But if you crash two big waves and the next one is a cannon, that would be like two, maybe three turns worth of time right? So this is a really nice simplified way to look back at your games and your plays and ask, do you have time, right? Because oftentimes what happened this week is you would create a timer for one turn and then we would take three turns worth of actions, right? So you'd create enough timer to, you know, go play some deep vision, but then we would gank bottom and then we would take dragon. And by the end of this, we're down three waves, right? So this is a very nice simplified kind of analogy that you can take into your own games to say, okay, how many turns can I take here, right? And then do I actually utilize these free turns well? So that's a good analogy. Um, and the last little caveat is understanding freezes. Freezes, we, we touched on this a little bit, will give you time, right? Um, if they can't crash the wave into you, you have some more time. So like, let's say, um, it's three minutes, 30 seconds into the game and scuttle crab is spawning, right? And we have a big freeze here and we're bot lane. Again, these concepts apply to all lanes just cause I'm using mid as an example. It applies to all lanes. And as a jungler, you can use this to kind of understand how your opponents feel or how your laners feel, right? Let's say we have a big freeze here. We're playing the blue side bot lane and the freeze is kind of just sitting here and the crab is spawning and they don't push very fast, and this is a cannon wave, can we move to this crab fight if the crab fight is happening here? I think it would re <clears throat> really depend on how fast they can clear the cannon wave. Absolutely. That's what it depends on. It depends on did they move and how fast can they clear it? Because, well, scenario one, if they move up and you come back, uh, you are just winning here, right? Because they're going to lose a couple minions, or they're going to lose a lot of minions. You're only going to lose a couple. Right, so that's really good. Scenario two, if they can't push it that fast and you just walk up, collect your kill and come back, that's also good, right? Because remember the, the tower has to do seven shots to the cannon, right? So you have at least seven tower shots worth of time. That right there is about half a turn by itself, right? Well, then you have to factor in how far they push it, which is about half a turn. You have about one turn worth of time here, assuming they stay and they don't push really fast, right? Even if they push as fast as possible, the tower still has to kill the cannon before you like lose anything major. That's about half a turn. Does this thought process make sense? It does uh, only how much time is a turn for you? Uh, it depends. It, it's, it's rough. It's just a rough analogy to kind of understand this stuff. But I was talking earlier about how here like warding would take a turn but like roaming would take two turns and resetting would take like a turn and a half. No, I understand that, but uh, like 30 seconds, uh, how long is one turn? It's, uh, it's rough. It's not meant to be an advanced, it's just a rough kind of analogy, right? So I don't want to have like hard numbers on these things 
because there's so many variables. It's hard to just be like one turn equals 30 seconds. Okay. It's, um, it's just, a, it's more of a rough concept to help say like one turn is a relatively small timer, right? Half a turn is barely a timer. Two turns is a very big timer, right? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Can I see that last slide again? Yeah. And it's just a, a, a rough analogy to get you started on the concept that the more things you want to do, the bigger your timer has to be. Okay. So freezes are kind of an advanced concept, but you can use them to kind of add into your wave management, right? If we are um, gold plus, we can really start understanding this. If we're diamond plus, I expect we really start utilizing this right? We, um, you know how much the freeze on the bounce back is going to add into your timer. You know, kind of how you can use freezes to, to leverage these kind of things, right? Especially against champions that are really weak to freezes. Like in the mid lane, what champions are weak to freezes? We talk about this a lot. What champions do we freeze against? Hyperscalers. Yeah, right. The hyperscalers. We're going to freeze against the Cassidans and the Kales because these guys, if you leave them, they can't even crash the wave very fast, right? They're just going to be stuck there autoing, autoing, autoing. We just go to the fight and come right back, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into examples here. So let's go ahead and use the tools that we just talked about to really break down this situation. Let's go through all the factors. How many waves is Talon crashing here? one he's got two waves worth of minions right so this is um if you're gonna crash two waves you won't have 12 minions because some of them died on the way there but this is two waves right it took two waves there are five casters here right this is two waves worth of minions it's a two wave crash which is pretty big um did he crash a cannon no no he did not so if these two waves weren't cannon waves which wave is the cannon wave? The next one. The next yeah, one. Yeah, either the next one. Yep, the next one has to be a cannon. This, again, this deductive reasoning to know which one is a cannon, even if you're not timing it, just by looking at this picture, we can tell the next one has to be a cannon. That's a really oh, yeah. good uh, kind of... How do you know that uh, the wave uh, Ikash didn't contain a minion? Didn't contain a cannon? A cannon minion, yeah. Um, because like all of the minions are alive and the cannon is not alive. So do you think they both hand shook killing both the cannons while this kind of just crashed? Like that's just- that how uh, focused cannon first? Uh, after, after killing the melee, yes. But look at the, the wave, melee. it hasn't crashed cleanly, right? This wave just landed, right? So you think from oh, here- Oh, the screenshot is taken uh, as soon as it crashes, okay. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Um, so the next one has to be a cannon and this deductive reasoning, super, super important. Cause what does this cannon do? What does this mean that the next one's a cannon? It yeah. basically gives you another turn. Yeah, exactly. This buys you another turn because on the bounced wave, you're going to have this nice freeze that Fiora can't crash cleanly, right? She's going to really struggle to crash that. So you actually have another timer here. Beautiful. So. Um, and how close is the next wave? How do we tell how close the, the next wave is? Where ours is. Exactly. We just look at where ours is and ours we can see is by the inhibitor, which means on the enemy side, their wave is here. So it's not that close, right? Next wave is far. Nice. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think what other factors did we talk about? How fast can Fiora crash the bounced wave? Really slowly. Nah, very slow. Slowly, yeah. Very slow. Right? Not only is she like really low HP, low resources, but she also hasn't gone back yet. Or maybe she did, but she doesn't have any strong items. Um, very slowly. Very slowly. So, with all of these factors, how big is this timer? Like one turn. Like no. three. Not anymore. Uh, not more. This because is... the cannon takes one turn. We said maybe uh, one point five. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say it's an away. arguable dragon. With Shaco being bot side already. This is one of the biggest timers that will ever happen in your games. This timer is giant because of all of the factors we talked about, right? Let's actually go back to this slide where we talked about the factors. We have lots of minions crashing for the amount of minions. We have a very tanky wave coming on the next one. 
how the far the next wave is super far away and the enemy can't clear it. Every single potential factor weighing into this timer is a very big positive thing for the amount of time. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, you have a question? Yeah. What's up? Let's say it's not Fiora, it's something like Atzerat. Uh, do you count the timer on the, um, on the wave that uh, Talon crashed? Because if uh, Zerat uh, focuses the back line, uh, the next wave comes uh, and doesn't find a phase. Uh, it goes uh, directly uh, in the middle, uh, crashing against the other wave, no? Uh, yeah, and if it's in the middle, that's still fine, right? If it's in the middle, no, it's yeah, not sure, like you're losing time. You have, uh, less, obviously, you have less time, uh, the more uh, uh, we clear the opponent. Has. Yeah, exactly. But uh, uh, does it matter that you crashed uh, a big wave in that case? No. Oh, no, yes, it, it does, be because Zerath has to clear it anyway. Mm, yeah, Zerath is still locked yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, um, the freeze isn't going to feel as good, obviously, because you guys are going to be net even on it, but you still got to take your turns, right? Which yeah, still sure. leads you to be ahead. Also, uh, Zerath at level 7, if he doesn't have Lost Chapter, probably can't do that anyways. Uh, he has to have some levels or items. Okay. Anyways, this timer is like the biggest possible timer you could have at this point in the game. This is just like chef's kiss roam timer. So what should we do with it? Hover drag. And here, so why hover dragon? Let's, let's talk about the map state here. Jungle, strong side. Uh... Yeah, so this is our strong side. Um, how does this dragon feel if we do this? Like It feels better if bot pushes that or crashes that wave yeah so it feels better if bot crashes that wave that's good where's the enemy jungle uh he's bot probably side. bot because he's got no top cam yeah so he's bot side so now we have a couple options one of the options is what you guys are all talking about which is dragon one of the other options is to get bottom to have prio so like bot gank this could be a dive this could be um just hovering to make sure they get oh, prio. i know the answer actually and there's an invade um Muu, what's the answer? Yeah, it's the same thing uh, uh, that happened in my VOD. Your jungler is putting bot side, you are putting bot side, you know where the jungler is, uh, go invade, you are in two assassins, you kill him, and then you go to the Yeah, exactly. That's beautiful. Uh. That's exactly what I would do, right? Because, uh, again, your bot lane looks like they have prio here. You have prio, this is your strong side. Look at how natural this kind of invade movement is, right? I would be spam pinging assist me on this. Um, but the biggest thing I want to emphasize is this early dragon is worth very little. This early dragon is not better than killing the enemy jungle and snowballing, right? It's not worth more than a dive bottom and snowballing your bot lane, right? This early dragon, all it does is uh, make your, you better in 20 minutes, right? So it does very little. It does nothing for you right now, right? So as a fast-paced champion, do we want to prioritize early dragons? No. No. It does not snowball us. It does not fit with our tempo. The dragon play, the only time we would do dragon here is if we literally could not do anything bottom and we literally could not invade, right? But the, the situation is still happening. If those situations are true, then we'll do the dragon. But it's a very kind of like last thing we think about. Well, okay, so if fast-paced champions don't want to do this, who does want to do dragons early? Scalers. <clears throat> yeah, scalers. And why do scalers like dragon early? It's buying their because time until they scale. Beautiful. Right, it buys them time. It says, okay, look, the early team, you're not going to be able to get soul for five extra minutes. I, I just bought myself five extra minutes to scale. Well, if we have that kind of mindset on Talon, how does that feel? Yucky. Yucky, yucky, yucky. We really do not like that. Um... So here in this situation, you have a ton of time. What I would do is I would go spam ping invade, um, go hover my bottom to make sure they have prio. And then as your team kind of moves with you, go kill the jungle and then your wave will be back. You can go deal with it. And then your jungle has space to do dragon if he wants. But especially as the mid laner, as a fast paced mid laner, you will never hit this dragon, right? You can buy space for it. You can go gank lanes for prio for it. You can go invade for it, but you'll never like go hit it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. This timer is freaking giant. And here it's very natural to kind of either set up a bot, uh, bot dive or to invade. 
Dragon here is probably the worst play with this giant amount of time you have. Uh, do you remember what you did here, Lava Lamb? I don't, but it definitely wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, you actually stayed, and then on the oh, next no. wave, you just left without a timer. It was really, really awkward. All right. Okay. So yeah, perfect. Um, this is actually the game that we talked about kind of getting these timers and then moving out, getting these timers and moving out, right? It feels really awkward to stay here. Here is a second example. And I called this one paying attention. What do we have to pay attention here? Let's, I'm going to leave this completely open to you guys. I'm not going to ask you to go through it step by step. Just how big do you think the timer is y'all? Look at, look at everything that's happening. We're playing against a Karthus mid. This is the wave. How big is the timer here? So the cannon's going to get off about six shots. It's going to hit the cannon three times and then wipe yep. out the other three minions in about three shots. Yep. So, so 1.5. What else do we have to think about? So yeah, we'll we, declare the next wave pretty quick. So we have a little bit of time on, on this, right? So we have, you know, half a turn. We have, yeah, a, a couple of seconds, right? Because the tower's going to hit all this. But he is clearing it pretty quick. What about the next wave? Yeah, it's not a cannon, so he's going to clear it even faster. And it's pretty close. And it's pretty close. That's what we need to pay attention to. The next wave is just out of vision, right here. And this is almost dead. So we only have time until these minions die, really. Right? Because he can crash this next one so fast. We have... Okay, so... How big is this timer on a scale of like one to 10 with 10 being the longest possible timer we saw last time and one being like the shortest possible. How big would you rate this timer? Like a three. Yeah, three. this is like a two. Like this is so small. Yeah, okay. You have almost no time here, right? Karthus is nuking the wave fast. The next wave isn't a cannon. The next wave is super close. Um, so with this really small, small, small timer, I would call this about half a turn. Right. Well, what can we do with about half a turn? Place a ward. Beautiful. That's the only thing you can do. You can go place a ward. Um, and this is actually from Gantz Fod. Was anybody here? And do they remember what Gantz? Or does anybody want to take a guess what Gantz did on this wave? He went and bought him. Yeah, he said, oh, I have a timer. I'm going to go take Dragon. And it's like, no, 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 no. First of all, you don't even want the Dragon. Second of all, you do not have time to step further than a couple of steps to place a ward, right? You have to deal with the next wave. And then if you burn the next wave really fast, you may have time to go do a bigger play. But you can't hear. The timer's not big enough. Are we all, all, all on the same page here? Anything, anything confusing to anybody? It's, it's clicking. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. One uh, of the biggest keys is looking at where the next wave's coming in. And we always look just so we can tell where it's at because of where ours is. Okay, any questions before we go on to the next example? Yep. Okay. Uh, how do you decide uh, uh, if, it's better, if it's better to harass the opponent under tower uh, over warding if you have uh, such a small timer? Um, that like comes here, down... you have a ward bot lane and you have vision in top lane, it seems. Yeah. Do so you really need to ward? It comes down to champion identity i would ward because this is your strong side and you want to set up this play especially on the next wave so what i would do here is i would just drop a ward like right here or maybe even like over here and then this dragon's guaranteed on the next wave if you could if you have a nice strong side like this and you put this vision down mm, it's so juicy and then it opens up this invade for kindred opens up this mark opens up you guys killing the enemy jungle but yeah poking under tower is fine usually as long as you are safe but here do you know where the enemy jungle's at like you could get ganked from multiple spots and you don't have somewhere really nice to lean. Uh, wait, don't you lean bot because uh, the only way he attempts to gank you is uh, to part uh, um, like, uh, I don't know. Well, he can time. do this, which is really shit for Ori because we have no mobility. If we were playing like Ori, maybe it'd be fine, but this is bad for Ori. Or he can go around, yeah. So you would need some like better work because this vision sucks, right? That's part of why we're oh, right. yeah, that, yeah. You can go around. The mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you already have vision, then staying in Poke Inner Tower or getting plates is fine. Just know that hitting this, Nice calls it uh, ringing the bell, which I really like. It's, it's very loud. You're going to pull people to you. You're going to pull the enemy support. You're going to pull the jungle. 
Um, so you have to have vision to do it, but if you already have vision down and you already have like prior on these lanes, then yeah, it's, it's fine. And it's mostly a champion identity question, right? Like Talon would never, right? Talon is leaving and killing the jungle. But Orianna, yeah, absolutely. You have the range that if you're playing against somebody that is low, yeah, absolutely poke them down. Okay, so next example, we're actually using Cold Coot's uh, jungle game here. We're talking about how the timers impact the space you have as a jungler. So the first question we have to ask here is, do our laners have time and access to leave to this crab fight? Yeah. Absolutely, right? This is what priority is. So there's two big concepts that why I really wanted to pull this jungle VOD. Okay, so this is what priority is. This is exactly what it looks like. And this is what tempo is, right? This is a big part of tempo where you guys are matching these wave states, right? When these wave states are matched, you have a really, really nice opportunity as a team to make a big play, right? So now, let's say you have a support that wants to play with you and you have like an assassin mid. Let's say this game, we have like a talon mid. Because right now, you can go fight for the crab super easily um, and you know your laners can move first. But let's say you have a talon mid and you have like a pike support, both or, or a thresh or somebody that wants to go fight and play. What could you do with this time? Invade their jungle. Yeah, you could go kill the enemy jungle on his buff or on his last camp, right? Because again, we have all of this really, really nice tempo. So one of the reasons timers are so important to understand is because they're like the first building block in understanding game states. The next building block is like tempo and matching this with your teammates and then making team-wide plays with that, right? So it's really important to have a strong understanding of these kind of wave management ideas and these timer ideas because they are the very foundation of how the whole game works, right? Even if we're kind of reviewing one of my VODs, which the next example is going to be from one of my games, it's just building on top of these ideas. It's the same thing, just kind of with more blocks on top. So does, does this idea of kind of understanding lane priority and matching it up with tempo make sense? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, and especially especially for our talent player, like this is super important, right? Being able to understand, does your bot lane have prio? Does that mean you guys invade rather than dive? Or what, you know what I mean? What does that mean for you? So example four, breaking the rules. So this is actually a picture from one of my in-houses that I streamed. So I'm in comms with my Hecarim uh, and my bot lane, right? And this is the third wave of the game. This is a cannon wave. And what does that mean? If it's a cannon wave and Syndra's level two and it's a scaling mage, like what factors am I paying attention to here? It's going to take a while to crash your tower. Yeah, she can't yeah, crash tanky. this very fast. Right? So she pushes slow, pushes slow, and the wave is very tanky. So if I wanted to go bottom right now, would I have to crash this wave? No question mark. No right i could just go bottom right now and i'll lose two or three minions but if i think that this double kill is a high chance of happening right if i say like so if i leave right now and i go take two turns i'm gonna lose two to three minions right now it's i can weigh are these two minions more worth than my chance question mark chance at a double kill. Um, and if you go back and watch here, I actually start hovering this right now because I'm noticing, look, their bot lane is really overextended. And my Hecarim is pathing down here. So in my brain, I'm using these rules that we talked about and I'm almost, I'm almost gonna break them, right? I call this example breaking the rules. I'm about to leave without a timer because I know that I like, she can't punish me not having a timer. So if you know she can't punish it, I'm constantly paying attention to my bot lane and I'm constantly paying attention to my Hecarim and I'm asking if this chance at this double kill ever goes up like to like 70%, I am going to sprint bottom right now and it's going to be worth it. So once you know these ideas very strongly, you can actually use what those ideas are built into to do much more creative plays. Again, that's what I talked about in the last slide where once you understand the very basic building blocks, you can really build on top of it and do lots of cool creative things. This play 
is rooted in the same very basic idea of understanding. She cannot push very fast, and this wave is very tanky, so it's not moving anywhere. This wave is very heavy, it's hard to move this wave. She doesn't have the strength to move it out of the way, so I know I can leave bottom right now. And in this game, I actually do leave bottom and we get a double kill. Because their bot lane keeps trying to push, and our Hecarim just runs straight down with me, and we collect the double kill. And this game was pretty much over. Right? Do you remember where she was able to get the wave when you were done? Like when you got back to mid? Yeah, so she had it, um, I think she crashed it, but I got the cannon. So it's like, I lost a couple minions, but I got the cannon. So it's like, I, I, I might have not gotten the last hit, I think I got the XP though, for sure. Right? So I got the XP, so huge worth. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. This is kind of the last example I have. But as a little recap, the things that I want you guys to think about is make sure you're not taking more turns than your timer allows for, right? Make sure that when we're deciding how big our timer is and how many turns we have, we look at how big is the wave, how tanky is the wave, how far is the next wave, right? That's really, really important is the next wave kind of like here, the next wave's not even coming because this wave just crashed. Right? This next wave isn't even on its way yet. How fast do they push? Right? How fast do they push? Do they push? How do cannons play into this? Right? Which is kind of goes hand in hand with the tanky part. And then like, yeah, how many, how many minions? This is kind of the wrap up for my lecture. But again, the reason we did this was because this was in so many of you guys' VODs. Next time we see the mistakes, we're going to really bring in these points. And then we're going to be very kind of... Uh, methodical about it we're gonna say look how big was this timer did you have time to do what you did or did you have more time than you thought and you could have done more okay perfect